Hello students, this is Fazan Mirza. We are discussing the topic of AIDS, HIV AIDS. So this is an infectious disease. Before we go to the details of this disease, I would be I would just discuss the status of AIDS locally in Karachi and in Pakistan. This is the map of Karachi and this is some eyebrow raising uh, statistics which is shown to you here. So this is Karachi for you. You can see that people who inject drugs. So they were the you can see the estimates. The prevalence is about 48.7. And the, uh, this is the this is how common this AIDS is in these people who inject drugs. And then we come to if you go, go to transgenders, then there's a estimated number is 9123. About 12.9 transgenders are expected are actually they, they are suffering from uh, from these. This is these, these are the active cases. Prevalence is always the active cases. And in, in, in Karachi only female sex workers. So you can see 2.6 percent of them are uh, showing uh, that they are AIDS and then homosexuals. You can see 9.8 uh, 9.2 sorry is the prevalence among them. What is the reason? So the reason these include sharing of hypodermic needles among uh, people who inject drugs in groups. And uh, when we are discussing uh, transgenders or female sex workers, so one thing is very common and that's promiscuous behavior. So promiscuous behavior is seen among people who are transgenders or female sex workers or even in homosexuals or even heterosexuals for that course. So promiscuous behavior is something that brings the disease home. Uh, why was the disease common in homosexuals? So it's basically because of the anal intercourse. It increases the chance of bleeding and the body fluids. They end up mixing the virus pass from semen of the infected person to the blood or from the blood of the infected person to the semen of the non-infected person. Because the anal region, it's not having the thick, thick uh, coating of mucous membrane that vagina is having. So anal core intercourse is most likely to cause breakage in the lining because of the friction that's produced during sexual intercourse. Some people think that AIDS is because of uh, it's an urban case. No, it's not an urban disorder. It's 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 there in the rural area as well. So this is Larkana. So if you just see it, 16.2 is the prevalence uh, among the people who inject drugs. 4.9 is the prevalence in people who are homosexuals there. And transgenders, 18.2. The prevalence, as you can see, it's not that low. It's pretty much quite similar to the urban areas. And in, among female sex workers, the, the same goes like it's 4.1%. And the causes, again, are sharing the hypodermic needles and the uh, anal intercourse, uh, the body fluids mixing, and the promiscuous behavior. And obviously, this, the, the, any, any of these my, people, if they are heterosexual, so they would just bring the disease home. And they would infect their their family members, and the fam once the once their life partner becomes infected, they would have babies who will become infected as well because the mother would be uh, uh, if the mother is uh, is is suffering from the disease, so she would pass this on to the uh, to the baby through to, through the placenta, and if not so, then probably through lactation. So this is this is uh, something that is eyebrow raising that AIDS is not a not an urban phenomena it's 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 a global phenomena and aids is a pandemic the last pandemic that we came across of uh, before covid so uh, this is hiv outbreak cases in pakistan you can see that this is this is your sindh this is where larkana is and this larkana came across a, uh, was highlight a lot of highlights because of sudden rise in cases suddenly because of some re reasons that are beyond the scope of discussion of this particular um, course right now so you can see that uh, uh, in people suffering from uh, from AIDS, there are more males suffering for 52% than, than females who are 48%. And you can see that the age group is very alarming. The age group is the this age group, the, the, the kids in Larkana who were two to five years, this is the day our HIV positive. This is something very alarming. Uh, HIV outbreak in the sort of province of Sin. So the government then the, and the World Health Organization got involved, and then they start they started highlighting this issue, and and uh, it is expected to become better uh, in future, hopefully. So uh, what, is 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 Darkana to be blamed? Well, not really, because lack of screening at other places it doesn't mean that there is low incidence or uh, low prevalence. Of the cases there, because the it because it's just that the screening is not done here. There is no screening being done here. Same here, same here, same here. So it actually is that the, when the screening was done here in a rural region, suddenly the cases showed up. So 
moving on what are we discussing further so again the aids status in pakistan before we go any further so since apart apart from what the the, the the screenings that have been done baluchistan sindh and punjab and this is islamabad and this is kpk and uh, you can just see that the patient load is is quite quite high in pakistan and gender wise if you just do the discuss this is these are men these transgenders women um they are suffering from the, the, the this is gender wise distribution of hiv in pakistan hiv aids um underage men 564 underage women 426 so this is this is a major concern uh that how come underage men and underage women out of this out of this value how could the underage men and women become infected pakistan is number 5 on the global aids scale we rank very high Uh, there are just four more countries above us 65 lakh drug users are active in pakistan right now and pakistan one country philippines the second country indonesia the third country all these three are declared islamic states and having such a high load of hiv cases in all the three countries uh, says a lot about the practices that we follow in these countries about 10 lakh per year expense is required for treatment or management of hiv aids and 10 lakh per year per patient so is it even affordable for every individual suffering from the disease from the from the disease plus the social stigma that one would get uh, while living with aids so living with aids is not easy it's not at all easy there is a lot of expenses to be covered with the for, for the medication and there's a there's a huge social stigma attached so now coming back to what actually aids is aids is caused by hiv hiv is human if, uh, immunodeficiency virus this virus is uh, it, this disease is not a pathogen does not caused by a bacteria this is caused by a virus so this is the viral particle you can see a lot of uh, these uh, these uh, these glycoproteins on its surface so what do you see on this in this virus inside the virus there is an enzyme called reverse transcriptase there is rna here and there is an enzyme protease as well and then there is a protein core outside this protein core there is another protein coat and outside that protein core there is an outer lipid membrane so this particular virus is actually having a lipid membrane and your cells also have a phospholipid membrane and these are the these these things are the glycoproteins this is these are two type of glycoprotein this is gp41 uh, here and this one is gp120 so they are both uh, involved in transmit in 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 penetration of this this virus into your cells so hiv is a type of a retrovirus it is having rna uh, it as its nucleic acids it can convert that rna into dna by using the enzyme reverse transcriptase that reverses the process of transcription so the virus already is having that retroviruses are the viruses who have the enzyme reverse transcriptase they can they have the ability to reverse the process of transcription so they can make dna from rna once the dna is made the replication will go on more viral particles will be made and more viral particles will then go on to infect more cells and the cells which are affected are helper t cells these are the main cells of your immune system so if they are infected the helper t cells uh, they are unable to ward off the diseases they are unable to release cytokines cytokines are the chemicals with the helper t cell release and these cytokines are required for proper functioning of your immune system all the antibodies which are produced in your in your immune system or the phagocytosis that occur it is all dependent on how much cytokines are there in your blood and the cytokines are the chemicals released by helper t cells so you can imagine how the immune system weakens in a person who is suffering from hiv aids because the helper t cells cannot release enough cytokines the immune system weakens and because of weakening of the immune system the person becomes the person becomes very susceptible to secondary infections and these infections cannot be uh, cannot be war, uh, can can't be warded off so uh, the immune system is not working that way so the the infections are not really working uh, the infections they, they set in and the disease becomes fatal how hiv is actually affecting so i have added some annotations on this diagram taken from a book so this is the host cell the, the helper t cell the helper t cell will have a receptor on its cell surface membrane and this is the hiv 
particle, the HIV virus, we will call it HIV particle, which came here. And these are the glycoproteins I discussed already, GP41, and this is GP120. It would interact with the receptor. This receptor on the cell surface membrane of the T cell is called as the CD4 receptor. So CD4 receptor is present on your helper T cells. They, will, they are the ones who form bonds with GP120 of the viral particle. Once this bond is formed, the nucleic acid, this RNA, the core, it enters into the host cell. Upon fusing, the, this is, and the virus enters, the core is entered into the T cell. The HIV antigen will stay on the surface of the cell. So this is an infected cell. It will have this, this, these, uh, these surface proteins which were there of, the, of this particular pathogen. So what's happening here? You can see that this once the core enters, these, uh, this will have RNA strands. DNA copy will be formed by the action of reverse transcriptase. The RNA strand will be removed by the action of ribonuclease. Ribonuclease is an enzyme required for the degradation of RNA. So once the RNA has been removed, you can see this, this red line is the RNA. Red line was one strand of RNA. One strand of DNA was made against it. So now the red strand, which is the RNA, it needs to be just uh, chopped off. It will be removed. This green strand is the, is the strand of the DNA. It will make a complementary strand of its own by using DNA polymerase. Now this DNA polymerase was actually your own DNA polymerase, which is helping out the virus forming its own DNA. So the DNA is made. This is the double strand DNA. Now the double strand DNA will go inside the nucleus of the T cell, the helper T cell, and it will become integrated into the DNA of the chromosome in the nucleus. And in this state, we say that the disease is a provirus. A latent virus have penetrated and it can just reverse all these processes to form new viral particles. And that's what's happening. What will happen further? The genes on HIV host chromosome, these are now incorporated into the uh, nucleus of this, of this host cell. It will make messenger RNA copy on the, it, 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 the mRNA will come out through the nuclear pore. You know the process of transcription has occurred. After transcription, translation will follow on the ribosomes of the helper T cell. And these ribosomes are your ATS ribosomes present in the cytoplasm as well as on the rough ER. So the mRNA will be translated into proteins. Viral proteins will be formed. These viral proteins will then incorporate together and they will form a viral core around themselves. So this viral protein core will form and there were these, these surface proteins already on the surface of the infected cell. So once the viral proteins are, uh, the, this core is ready, it will go and fuse with this membrane. It will come out uh, being wrapped in the same antigens that were already displayed on the surface of the, of the, of this helper T cell. And now this virus, all these which are with your, your helper T cell have literally become the factory of producing more viruses. So the more viruses they come out, each of these viruses will go on to uh, infect more uh, helper T cells. So what is HIV? What's AIDS? What's the difference between the two? So there is a condition which we call as asymptomatic and there's a condition called symptomatic. So asymptomatic is when HIV is positive, the person is having HIV, but the disease of AIDS is not yet there. Symptomatic is when HIV is positive and AIDS also occurred. Normally, this takes about 10 to 15 years uh, for the disease to transform from asymptomatic to symptomatic. Symptomatic AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Acquired means you do not just, uh, you do not, you are not uh, having it genetically, but you get it by encountering the pathogen. Immune deficiency, it severe causes immune deficiency severely by uh, damaging the helper T cells and syndrome because eventually the person will suffer from several infections at the same time. So it will be a combination of several infections occurring together. So what happens? in asymptomatic and symptomatic AIDS, HIV entered by the exchange of body fluids, which could be either because of unprotected sexual intercourse between two individuals or more than two, promiscuous behavior, which is again the behavioral outcome, and then shearing of needles and sharp objects. And these sharp tools or this shearing of needles could be either by drug users or these could be done at clinics or probably because of some practice at the labs 
or some salon which we have visited or or even tattoo parlors so these are all the potential re the part with the conditions where they, this can get transferred and dentists as well so one need to be very careful and apart from these sharing of needles and sharp tools transfusion of unscreened blood or blood products who contain this hiv can pass it on as well hiv can be passed on from mother to fetus and it can be passed on from the mother to baby as well once this uh, this disease turns into symptomatic so eventually the person will have a low count of helper t cells they will start to weaken the immune system opportunistic infections these are the infections which will take opportunity now they will start to occur in this person and the immune system will be unable to clear off these diseases so immune system is too weak it will not be able to fight back and since it's unable to fight back infections such as tb infections such as pneumonia they occur and the pneumonia which is commonly occurring is by p gervosi so this is occurring by uh, this a uh, fungal infection and then there is a there is a cancer called kaposi sarcoma this is a cancer of uh, blood vessels and it is caused by a virus which is herpes like virus it causes extensive internal bleeding in an individual and all these conditions they eventually uh, become they they are they cause the the person to, to die uh, because of these infections how can malaria how can sorry this hiv can be aids can be prevented a uh, barrier is to be there the barrier needs to be uh, ensured to prevent free mixing of body fluids the use of condoms or femidoms or dental dams is required contact tracing is something very vital here you trace back the contacts to make sure that enough people are screened formula feed for babies suggested for females who are suffering from aids and uh, using screened blood of and sealed needles for whenever uh, sealed razors uh whenever the to avoid to avoid this kind of thing and then awareness drives so awareness drives are very important to make the people aware about the disease first december um is the actually world's aids day when i was talking about the opportunistic infections tb and pneumonia are the main cause of deaths in hiv aids patients in the developing countries but in developed countries this has been combated so people in developed countries don't don't really die from tb and pneumonia because they have uh, they 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 respond very well to drugs and the drugs are available for treatment of these but in developed countries people die from carposi sarcoma uh, because this is a this is the next challenge so anyhow if either of these infections they they are actually fatal you can see the pathogen just there and it is splitting it is it comes out it buds off it forms a the layer and then it's ready so how's treatment of hiv aids done how is it treated so normally it's it's it, it just uh, uh, goes very dramatic and the drugs are very expensive i already told you about 10 lakhs per year so these 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 drugs have extreme side effects headache rashes diarrhea and some of them could be permanent damage to nerve and abnormal fat distribution in the body and the the drug that are that normally you, is used they, it prevents the replication of virus inside the host cell to prolong life but they do not cure the disease what do you mean by this it basically means that the drugs that are we using for example uh, zidovudine this drug is similar to have the nucleotides and it can con it contain base thymine it incorporate itself in the dna nucleotides so uh, once it is there it will river it will uh, it will it will just uh, uh, cause the reverse transcriptase to be blocked and because the replication of the dna cannot occur so the the course of this uh, this disease will become a prolong and uh, the the therapy is it it works this this drug works but what are you targeting if a person is already in is 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 in this state asymptomatic hiv positive but aids has not started means opportunistic infection have not set in you can very well uh, take uh, these drugs and these drugs can prolong the asymptomatic from 10 to 15 years there are cases in which this this a this span of 10 to 15 years was prolonged to up to 25 and 30 years in patients uh, who were who didn't develop symptomatic aids and they did died from some other diseases eventually the disease of aids never set in because they the the asymptomatic hiv uh, status was retained because of the use of those medications who uh, prolonged the damage who who actually curtailed the damage of uh, to a uh, to the helper t cells so helper t cells declining this was slowed down but if a person is suffering from symptomatic which is hiv positive aids 
if this is set in now if you give the medications now this is the aids have already begun now you can't really do much you cannot cure this you can't prolong this very well as you could prolong the asymptomatic hiv positive status so once the symptomatic aids is there all you can do is all you can do is just try to uh, fight uh, uh, give medications to improve the cases in which the um, the patient the patient may suffer may not suffer from in opportunistic infection or if they do so treatment should be suggested so if we just go on, so you can see this table, it covers of the pathogen is human immunodeficiency virus, method of transmission I've already discussed, global distribution, it's, it's a pandemic, uh, incubation, the first cases were in America, so, but, it, but that was 1970s, and it, this pathogen uh, is, is actually how it came, that's a, that's a very interesting story, probably you can just browse the net to, to see how this pathogen actually ended up in human beings. It was never in human beings to begin with. Uh, very similar to COVID, that it was in bats, it was not in human beings. But now, it, uh, the code, like the COVID, the, the, this virus have found its way into human population as well. The same went for, for human immunodeficiency virus, that it, it had another host initially, but now it's present in humans as well. So, clinical features already discussed, method of diagnosis, uh, this done by blood tests or saliva or the urine of, for the presence of the antibodies uh, for HIV. Something very fascinating, which I discussed uh, with the, a movie came out uh, a few years back, Bohemian Rhapsody. This movie was based on the uh, the band Queen, and uh, I, I if if you do not know who who, the, who this uh, this band was, this band was held uh, was the main singer, the lead singer was Freddie Mercury. The, he was the iconic singer at that time uh, back in 1970s, and he he made some uh, some exceptional songs. He was the one who made audience sing with him in his in his concerts and. The, what, what uh, you might you probably was might have heard the song uh we will we will rock you so yeah that song actually was from him and uh he was the he was actually the first uh um uh person a uh, first singer actually who interacted with the crowd in concerts in a live manner and the crowd would sing with him so he initiated that and all the all the singers today they uh, would if they are at the concert they follow what he initiated he was a homosexual so because of his homosexual tendencies since aids was uh, not really well known at that time so um, he he contacted aids in 1980s and he died in 1991 at the age of 45 so yes that's what happened to him um he gave an he gave some stellar performances uh, there was a concert of live aid uh, this concert was uh, the, uh, uh, it was aimed at gain, getting uh, good funding for the for fighting back the uh, fighting back uh, an an event that had occurred so this was a global event and it was fundraising event it was basically to just get funds for ethiopian famine and this was in 1985 and this this live aid concert was something like a jukebox of that time so a, a live jukebox so the, the singers from all over the globe they were they were performing there um the basic idea at that time promiscuous behavior was something that pro that got him uh, aids in the first place and his song show must go on is truly iconic highly recommended if you haven't watched this movie i would highly recommend this so this is a very good movie and an excellent performance by by rami malik so <laughs> winding it up uh, you can see how this uh, we probably just can use this figure to come up with the explanations of various things shown to you here you can see the key here cd4 helper t cells per millimeter cube of blood the value was here and you can see that it's declining from zero weeks to up to 10 years. So I told you that the disease takes about 10 years from the it, from the person, the time the disease starts to the time that the uh, H, this is the HIV positive time and eventually the person becomes, uh, become, it starts to have AIDS when the person starts to show up signs and symptoms of multiple um, uh, infections occurring at the same time. And here you can see in this this other color HIV RNA copy. So the RNA copies they increase and then they keep on increasing. They keep on increasing. So uh, you can use this figure to just see how opportunistic infection can be fatal for the AIDS patient. State by antibiotics cannot be used for the treatment of AIDS. And then there is something called ART, antiretroviral therapy. It's used in HIV treatment. I would really recommend that uh, you go through that. That that uh, art is actually beyond our beyond our course. But something very interesting and something that, that works very well. Antiretroviral therapy. So I'd uh, go for a discussion of uh, this. And uh, that was a very long video. Okay, uh, that's it. Thank you so much.